In this video, we're going to talk about the different sounds that the different types of, of waveforms in the oscillator section make in Xsynth. And again, these apply to most other software synths and, and various other hardware synths as well. This is all very, very common stuff um, and all derived from the, the analog synths of the, the 60s and 70s. Now, when you start a new patch, we'll just um, actually, we only want one oscillator here, so we'll just put the mixer down to zero. So we'll just be playing with just VCO1. If we hit a key on the keyboard now, we've got a sine wave set up here, so we'll just get a sine wave coming out. I might just do that up an octave. So that's the sound of a sine wave, and you can actually see what the sine wave looks like here, a nice little diagram. Sine waves are very pure sounds, they only have one frequency. Um, Every other waveform has that bass frequency as well as harmonics, and it's those harmonics that you cut away with the, the filter section over here. So the sine wave on its own is generally not terribly interesting for synthesis, but it does have its uses. Um, if we go tick one more up, we get to the triangle wave. This is a little more interesting because it does have, it has a, that strong harmonic frequency, uh, strong fundamental frequency, I should say, but it also has some harmonics. So if we play that, So it has sort of a, a mellow, hollow sound. So a, a triangle wave is really good for uh, woodwind instruments like flutes, for instance, where you need a sort of a, a mellow sound with a bit of a, a bit of a hollow tinge to it. Oops. Next is the sawtooth wave. And the sawtooth wave, that hard cut off at the end there, where it drops back down, um, gives it a really raspy, bright sound. So you get a really, oh, let's just hear it. So it's a really buzzy sound. There's a lot of energy there um, in the like high frequency energy that you can cut away with the filters. So sawtooths are really a very, very common uh, wave for sort of your typical synth sounds. Um, you know, the 303, for instance, is, is pretty much all, si uh, all sawtooth waves. But it's also really handy for things like brass instruments, and even for strings and other things if it's used in the right way you can get some really nice effects with the with the sawtooth. That's uh, a ramp wave, which is pretty much a sawtooth just in the opposite direction. It sounds the same. It has its uses, but it's pretty much just the same thing as a sawtooth wave for the most part. This is a square wave, and a square wave, like the sawtooth wave, has lots of high frequencies in it. So it has lots of, lots of sort of high energy stuff that you can take out with a filter. Um, but the bass sound is more sort of a hollow sound, kind of like the triangles, the, yeah, the triangle wave. I'll just hear that. So that can be really handy, again, for sort of wind instruments. You need to put more filter onto it, but you can definitely get some, some very nice wind style sounds out of that. We'll just go up and look at one more. Well, there's only a couple, there's only two more. This is a pulse wave. Now, a square wave is just a, a special case of a pulse wave where the, the up and down pulses are the same size. In a pulse, a general pulse wave, they, they might be different. Um, so with this control here, you can actually control the pulse width on either side. Um, so if we leave it in the middle there and play the pulse wave, it'll sound exactly like the square wave. But if we bring it down, and it doesn't matter which way you do it, you get the same results. Just yeah, this like the ramp and the, and the sawtooth wave sound the same. This will sound the same either way. Um, you get sort of a a brighter kind of a, a reedy sound almost. You can almost imagine that being like a a guitar or, a, or an electric bass kind of sound. So, and again, if we put it this way, we get the same sound, but, but in reverse, but it sounds the same. Um, so that's the pulse wave. So there's a lot of different possibilities with the pulse wave in terms of the sounds you can get out of it. This last waveform is not terribly common, but there are certainly synths that have it. This is uh, basically a mix between the triangle wave and the sawtooth wave. Um, so the same thing as the, the pulse wave, you can control it. If you leave this in the middle, It'll sound like a triangle wave. 
if you move it to one end, it'll actually sound like a sawtooth wave. And of course you can put it somewhere in the middle and get a combination of those two sorts of sounds. So you can get something that has some of the brightness of the sawtooth wave with a mix of the, the mellowness from the triangle wave. So that again gives you a bit more flexibility in the sounds that you can make. Now, before we finish this up, we'll just bring this mixer up and we'll show the kinds of things you can do with two oscillators. Now, there's a good reason why synths have two oscillators. I mean, you heard what a single oscillator sounds like. It's not terribly exciting. With two oscillators, you can open up a few more possibilities. Um, one of the classic things to do, and this is something that everyone does, um, is to take two sawtooth waves in particular, detune them slightly. See, so if you... If we leave them as is, they'll just overlap exactly and you'll get just the sound of a single sawtooth still. But if you detune them ever so slightly, and you can use the scroll wheel to do this, it's good to detune them both the same amount in opposite directions. So this, this pitch control controls the pitch of the oscillator relative to the keyboard. Um, so we're just detuning it a little bit off you know, the actual the, the key's fundamental tuning. We hit that now. You can hear that kind of ensemble effect. It sounds like, yeah, you know, rather than just having a single sawtooth wave, you've got the two sawtooth waves running, and you get that kind of combined sound, which is a bit more complex and more interesting, and it varies over time as well. That's a really important thing to remember when you're trying to create interesting sounding synth sounds. You need to make them vary over time, and that certainly does because it has that sort of harmonic, not harmonic, but rhythmic sort of ringing to it. Um, obviously, if you go to extremes, then the, yeah, the pitching is obviously off. But if you just do it subtly like that, then it works really well. Another thing you can do, and this is where a sine wave can actually come in quite handy, is to drop one down an octave. So if you've got, say, a... We've got a sawtooth wave here. We want to make a bass sound. Yeah, that's that's not really the kind of thing you'd associate as being a bass sound. It sounds still very bright. Um, you can boost that by putting a sine wave in as well. And what that'll do, because the sine wave is just at the fundamental frequency now, doesn't really do much like that but you can actually if you set this to minus five the scale on this is plus 10 to minus 10 the extremes are two octaves up so 10 is two octaves up five is one octave up so we're going to go to minus five which is an octave down Depending on your speakers, you might not be able to hear that, but you can actually hear that there's a, a sawtooth wave, a, the, the sine wave is an octave down, and it's giving that a, a nice sort of bass boost to the sound. Um, so that is essentially the oscillator section, and there's lots of things you can do with these different oscillators and combining them in, in different ways, but it's really sort of something to experiment with.